Okay, in this video we're going to continue our tutorial videos on quantum statistics. This is video number three, and the previous video was on multiplicity. So the current video is, I have to rubbing out some of it, but anyway, is I'm going to discuss the meaning of distinguishable, identical, interacting, non-interacting, and these are all terms that are very important in quantum statistics. So if you understand these, I think you're, you're on to a winner. So let's first of all discuss what does distinguishable mean. It means exactly what it says in the tin. It means that we can we can label each particle and follow it forever. So we can always say, well that's particle A or that's particle B or whatever. So let's say A, B, C, D, well they of course are distinguishable However, four A's is not distinguishable, and well, we couldn't label, we couldn't say which one was particle one, because if I now swapped, let's say I swapped these two, well, the, the properties, behaviors, everything of, of this one versus this one are the same, so I couldn't possibly tell that I've swapped them. And that's the point. Can you think of two particles in real life which are not distinguishable? Of course you can. Electrons. Electrons or quantum particles are, dis are not, they're identical, they're not distinguishable. However, if you want to think of particles which are distinguishable, we need to talk about classical particles. So classically we say that every particle is distinguishable. Alright, so let's move on from there. Well, what does identical mean? Well, I hinted at it there a moment ago. Identical means that you cannot label each particle. Because, well, if you swapped one particle for the other, you, would, you couldn't possibly tell that you swapped it. Okay? So they're indistinguishable par particles. So this time we went from A, B, C, D to A, 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 A. We know that if we swap any of those, we, we know if we swap any of these, we couldn't possibly tell because there's no way of telling. They are identical particles. And an example of identical particles, electrons. If you swap electron A with electron B, you don't know that you've swapped it. Okay, they're identical particles. Now, we come to the important part. Okay. Oh, sorry, um, just, what is, why do we need to know this? The reason we need to know this is if they are distinguishable, then the multiplicity is greater because, of course, there are more ways of arranging them. Like, we could arrange A, B, C, D, we could arrange it B, A, C, D, or B, A, D, C, or whatever. But in this one, there's only one way of arranging this. If we rearrange four identical particles, we just get this, we get the same arrangement no matter what way. So the multiplicity here is equal to 1. The multiplicity here is equal to oh, 24, isn't it? Uh, 24, yeah. Okay, so we see the multiplicity of distinguishable particles is greater than the multiplicity of identical particles. Or the entropy of distinguishable particles is greater than the entropy of identical particles. So that's why we need to know that. Okay? And as I said earlier on in my previous video on multiplicity, the whole occupancy function, Fermi Dirac, Bose Einstein statistics, is based on getting the occupancy function. So that's why it's important to know whether your particles are distinguishable or they are identical. And finally, we're going to talk about interacting particles. What is interacting? Well, it means that the states of particles depend on each other. The state the state of each particle is dependent upon its neighbors. Way I spelled that should tell you where I'm from. Anyway, so can we think of interacting particles? Well, yes, and I you have to excuse all the dust here. Electrons, we'll say electrons can have a property of spin. Well, they can have spin up and they can have spin down. The Pauli exclusion principle says that electrons can't have the same properties. Okay, they can't be in the same, fully in the same state. So let's say every other part, every other property of the particle was the same. So the only possible thing we can change is the spin. So if you have an electron and then we bring another electron of spin up here. Well, 
this is in state up and we bring another ele electron in state up close to it, well th that can't be the case so one of the electrons has to flip to spin down. So in other words the state of electron 2 was dependent on the state of electron 1 and vice versa. So these are interacting particles. However, non-interacting would be, for example, we had our, our letters. We're like, of course, well, this is this is very arbitrary. But letter A doesn't depend on what, what letter B is. So these would be non-interacting particles. All right. Now, why is this important? Well, the reason that this is important is, let's say we have a box. Let's say we have a box, and in this box, this box says it's spin up. All right. There's only one spot, and then you put in a spin down electron. If you put in a spin down electron, well, it'll become spin up. Grant. That's all well and good, but that means that no other electrons can get in there. If I brought another electron with spin up, well, then it couldn't get in there. If I brought another electron with spin down, it couldn't get in there because I'm only saying that there's one by spin up inside here. So really, what I, this is kind of an arbitrary example. What I'm trying to say is that when particles interact. They're, they don't like being beside each other generally and as a result the number of the multiplicity goes down because you can't have lots of particles in the same state that's really what it means you can't have lots of particles in the same state so let's say for example let's say for example I'm going to be very quick because we've done this we're going to do this in new videos let's say we have G this is um, this is macro state number two so this is s is equal to 2. Let's say we put n sub 2 is equal we put 4 electrons into this macro state. Okay? Now each we have four electrons trying to uh, to occupy here. If they're interacting, if I put an electron here, I can't put any more electrons into that state. Because if I put them in there, they'll be of the same state, which is not allowed. So therefore I can put electrons here or here or here or wherever it is. So the point is, once a state is occupied, you can't put any more particles in there. Now, however, if they were non-interacting, so if, if each particle was operated independently of all the others, well then you could put all the part. you could put n sub 2 particles in there if you wanted. You could put all n sub 2 particles in here, all of them in there. Or you could split, this could be n sub 2 over 2. This could be also n sub 2 over 2. Okay, so the point is, if I can put more particles in here, or to any one of these states if they are non-interacting, but if they are interacting, the multiplicity is reduced. Okay, so thanks for watching. Please pass it down to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and if you're feeling in a good mood, please click on an ad. Thank you.